Hi everyone, so this is another lecture for Biology 3. So I will be giving some tips and pointers on the principles that you need to understand for the lesson 2 or topic 2 in Biology 3. So I will be presenting to you uh, a lecture for the whole lesson 2. So this is good for 2 weeks. So this is for 2.1 to 2.4 of our learning guide. So I will be starting and so this is entitled Morphological and Molecular Data in Phylogeny. So, so let's start. So, we, uh, so to start this, let's ha have some definition of terms. So sa learning guide ninyo, I think this is 2.1. 3.1, nabanggit dyan about character and character state and also meron nabanggit na tungkol sa data. So let me just clarify the definition of these terms. When we say character, okay, when we say character, these are well-defined feature in a taxonomic unit. For example, character height. Okay, when we say character state, this is the value of the character and this must be mutually exclusive. Example, the character is height, the character is height, the character state I tall or short. So to be mutually exclusive, let's test if this is mutually exclusive. For example, David is tall. When we say David is tall, David cannot be short. Okay? Okay, next. Uh, last lecture, I, 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 I gave some definition on homology and analogy and I focus on molecular data for defining homology and analogy. For this particular lesson, I will be uh, focusing on how to distinguish homologies from analogies. So let's have uh, an example here, an, an ex exciting example. This can be found in your book in Campbell. So for example, so tingnan natin itong dalawang organisms na to, the sugar glider and the flying squirrel. Sugar glider are endemic in Australia. And the flying squirrel ay nakikita natin sa North America. As we can see in the morphological characters of these two organisms, makikita nyo na halos magkamukha sila. So just by looking at them, magkakaroon tayo ng idea, oh, maybe magkamag-anak sila. Siguro dahil dun sa Pangea, nagkaroon lang, nagkahiwalay lang silang ganyan. Alright, kung titignan natin ang developmental biology ng dalawang organisms na ito, we will find out that sugar gliders ay mga marsupials na tinatawag. Yung flying squirrels, tinatawag silang eutherians. Yung pag sinabi natin marsupials, ito yung mga organisms na nagigib birth ng mga premature na mga offspring tapos lumalaki yan sa mga tinatawag natin na mga pouches. Yes, ang pinaka- Sikat na siguro na kilala ng lahat ng mga marsupial ay mga kangaroo at mga koala. Now, nung flying squirrel, they are eutherians. Pag sinabi natin eutherians, they give birth doon sa fully developed na baby. So, yung lahat ng kanyang embryonic, embryonic development ay natatapos doon sa womb ng kanilang mother. Okay? So, makikita natin na magkaibang magkaiba talaga sila. Now, for... Distinguishing homologies and analogies, kanina makita natin na kahit magkamukha sila, hindi sila pwedeng sabihin na homologous kasi yung kanilang complexity, yung kanilang development ay magkaibang magkaiba. So, one way to distinguish homologies from analogy ay yung tinatawag natin degree of complexity. Which also nagbanggit ko na sa inyo sa last lecture ko about homologous character of the arms of lizard, bird, human, and flipper ng, ng whale. Kung titignan natin ng degree of complexity ng mga bones ng mga organisms na to, though hindi sila magkakapareho ng function, they are, they are similar. Okay? Pag sinabi natin analogous structure, no? sa so pag analogous structure, uh, they have, uh, pwede silang magkakapareho ng function, pero kung titignan natin ng kanilang complexity, hindi mo sila makukumpare to each other. Also, another way to distinguish homologies for and analogies ay pagkukumpare ng mga fossil evidences. For example, a specific trait can be found to a primitive organism. No? Nakita niya rin na, ah, nag-delay din siya ng egg. Nag-delay din ng egg yung 
yung kanyang ancestor. So, ibig sabihin, yung laying of egg ay homologous, uh, ano, homologous character ng inyong organism. Okay? Alright. Now, next. Kung merong uh, homology and analogy for morphological data, meron din tayong homology or homolog homologies and analogies sa mga molecular data. Pag sinabi natin molecular data, it could be DNA sequence or it could be RNA sequence or pwede rin siyang amino acid sequences. Now, how to distinguish homolog homologous Sequences, doon tayo mag-focus tayo sa DNA sequence for molecular data. No? How to distinguish homologous well, uh, DNA sequences from analogous DNA sequences? As you can see here, ito mayroon ta akong dalawang example. Ito A at B na sequence. Yung A sequence, ito nung kinocompare natin, ng dalawang uh, se uh, segment na to, at ito ang kinocompare natin dito. As you can see here, Kung ia-align natin yung mga magkakapareho dito, no, makikita na rin na possible along dun sa kanilang evolution, pwede nagkaroon ng deletion dito, no, or pwede nagkaroon ng insertion ng mga ng mga segments doon sa 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 DNA segment na ito. So kung titingnan natin dito, yung i-highlight natin ng mga possible na similarities nila, so makita natin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 out of the 14. So, 11 out of 14, no, na, na, na segments, no, na bases dito sa mga segment sa DNA sequence na to ay magkapareho. So, this similarity, ano, high similarity, among sa da, dun sa dalawa. So, between these two uh, DNA segment ay hindi pwedeng nangyari lang dahil sa coincidence. Okay? So, more likely nangyari ito dahil sila ay magkamag-anak or nagmana nila ito sa kanilang ancestor. Unlike doon sa segment B. Sa segment B natin or nung example B natin dito, makikita natin na dito sa kanilang segment, meron ka lang na makikita 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... So, this is around just 20% similarity between the two. So, this degree of similarity ay masyadong mababa para may attribute mo siya sa ancestry. So, more likely nung similarity na B, no, nung dalawang segment na ito, is due to coincidence only. So, ito ay analogous. Yung similarity nito ay analogous. Ang similarity nito ay homologous. Okay? ng cladogram, so you can make cladogram using morphological data or you can use uh, molecular data to make cladogram. Or, pwede nyo gamitin to both. No? Pwede itong pagsamahin. Sa computer program, pwede itong pagsamahin. Pero para lang maintindihan nyo how to use morphological data and molecular data, pinaghiwalay mo na ito sa inyong learning guide. Hopefully, sa inyong IS, nakapagawa na kayo ng cladogram using morphological data. However, kung hindi pa kayo nakagawa ng morphological data, I will try to introduce to you how to make cladogram using morphological data. Okay. Okay, here, as you can see here, no, pwede, using more, more, more like, uh, morphological data, uh, we will use homologous characters. Ibig sabihin ng mga ng characters. No? So, we will be using vertebral column, inch jaw, four limbs, Amion, presence of amniotic fluid or amnion in the egg, and hair, presence of hair. So, ito kasi yung mga homologous characters. So, meron tayong uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 na organism na ito compare. So, ang gagawin lang natin, iscore lang natin kung presence of absence. 1 for presence, 0 for absence. So, using this character table, makikita na naman natin itong character table. Sa kanilang lahat, ang walang na-derive na character ay si Lancet. So, nakita nyo, zero lahat ng kanyang score. Meaning, this is the output. Siya nung pinaka-primitive yung mga characters. Okay? Sumunod si Lamprey. Si Lamprey, siya nung unang naka-gain naka ng vertebral column. Siya lang nag-gain ng vertebral column. Okay? So, ibig sabihin sa kanilang 
sa kanilang lima, siya yung, uh, sa kanilang anim, siya yung uh, least yung mga na-derive. O meron siya na-derive, pero isa lang. Okay? Sumunod, yung isda, labas, na tinatawag. So, dalawa yung kanyang na, 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 na gain, vertebral column plus the hinge. Okay? So, on and so forth, lastly, ay yung sa, sa leopard natin, kung saan, Nagin niya lahat, vertebral column, hinge jaw, forelimb, amnion, and hair. So, ganun lang naman kasimple magawa ng, ng cladogram using morphological data. Okay? Now, let's go to molecular data. When we say molecular data, pag sa molecular data, ang ginagamit natin sa molecular data, na character, character states natin. Ang character natin ay DNA, yung ano, site doon sa DNA natin. So, for example, ang character natin ay A1, character 1, 2, 3, 4. So, that's site 1, site 2, site 3, and site 4. Ang character state natin ng ATCG. Okay? 